This is one of the key ones that I show people to get them to learn where their foot position should be when they release a the ball, where their hand position should be when they release a the ball, how to correctly release a ball, how to create more revs, revolutions with your ball, how to see exactly the ball motion you have, and then also I'm going to teach you the transition that your ball makes, though I guarantee you very few people understand this. Um, I thought this was common knowledge, and as I look around, people aren't teaching and showing what you need to do to truly watch your ball and see what's happening in your environment. So let's start with the basic here. All I see is coaches yelling at kids going, get your, get your ball by your foot, get your ball by your foot. We talked about how hard it is there. Um, I still have a couple flaws I'm working out, and so I'm training hard to get those, those taken care of and even improve further. Um, so with these kids, remember, every sport we do is almost always in front of us, and so it's very easy to see your form. Once you're here, we don't see anything, and we're trying to be focused and walk and look. It's pretty dang difficult to be looking down at your feet. That's like taking a hockey puck and looking all the time at it. You'll never be any good, so you have to be able to do that without. So they're getting yelled at, and then obviously they're spinning balls, and that spinning ball just goes into the gutter, and so you're trying to get them to do that, and whatever, you're telling them all these tricks, shaking hands, and all this other stuff, and isn't that nice? Two months later, they still really haven't done it. I'll do it in literally two minutes. And I'm going to show you here first. The rev trap, the rev trainer, we put our ball on this. Do this any place, any time. You need to use this <laughs> as much as much as you possibly can. All these things. The more you train, the better you're going to be when the time comes and the pressure hits, and you need to accomplish things. We're going to learn to put my foot right by the ball. Hey, there it is. I don't have to wonder. My ball is at my foot. As I come down. And I place my ball correctly here, my hand's right behind the ball. So now I've taught both things, how to get my hand behind the ball, how to put my foot right next to the ball. And we can vary this up onto a box, whatever level we want, to the person. If they release a the ball up here, we just raise it. This is just a touch low for me, so I'm going to bend over a little bit more. As we, we don't come through a ball, we throw it. We work around a ball. You do not go through a ball. You come, release, and work your fingers around the ball. So we're, we're learning, once again, that we get here and our thumb comes out. And look how, when my thumb comes out, how much room I really have. My fingers are right here. This is where they come out on your ball. You have only this distance to manipulate your ball. I'm going to do this towards you, and now, as I do this, we're seeing not only that I was in my balance, my foot's there, my hand's behind it, I kept my hand behind the ball, and I saw the resulting ball motion. So here's how we teach these kids really quick. When we're over here, and I show them, they're basically spinning a ball. So you show them, and you go, okay, so if I spin that ball like that, they see that it's going like that. Where's the ball going to go? Well, it's going to go over there. Exactly. If we don't spin, and we just come up right up the back side of the ball, I try to get them to look at a clock if they're old enough to tell time as a clock face. So here's my ball. Six o'clock's at the bottom. Twelve o'clock's at top. Five o'clock over here. Eleven there. So all we're doing is we're taking our fingers at 6 o'clock and pulling them up to 12 o'clock. That keeps it right behind the ball. So we're just going to tell them that, or even for a younger person, all I want you to do is keep your hand here, finish out in front, and they see this ball motion. They see that it's spinning forward. That will allow you to hit pins. Then I take my axis trainer. And I say, this is your ball too. Same thing. We want it off our fingertips. If you do this, it goes into the gutter. All I want you to do is toss this to me. So I'd be right there and we get them just to do this. Perfect.
perfection. Now take your ball, walk up, toss your ball at the parents. I'm telling you every single time. And they get the ball to roll. One of my favorite is I had the six-year-old and he didn't understand the concept of axis, of rotation, but he kept spinning the ball, couldn't get it on the lane. And we did this once I came in and saw what he was doing. Did this in three minutes. He rolled it. It went down and got, I think, seven or eight pins, can't remember. But he turned around to me and he goes like this. That magic. That's what you need. That moment of aha. He totally got it in three minutes. And he understands, I need the ball rolling like this. Not like this. And all of a sudden, he's starting to put up better scores. People are all over. We just put a swing pin in their, their arms. All of a sudden, instead of all over the place, wow, we're keeping our arms straighter and it goes there. The little balls just do. By the way, we have a five inch ball as well as a four inch. Just getting them to toss. I'm telling you, this one is such key. Tossing those fingers just to catch that ball. Because they're going, ah, and they don't see how the ball moves or, or, they're thinking they're spinning. Once they get their hand behind them, they see that the ball stays the same. I'm going to switch this around so you can see this yellow. I don't want that yellow coming around like that, right? That's spinning it. I want this. So that's repeatable. Once they repeat, they're going to get their scores up. I watched uh, one of the very first tournaments that I got to watch was... Uh, with PBA down at South Point, and you've seen um, the replays from this particular one, but Clara Guerrera was trying to make the show, and she had four games left. Every other guy that made the cut was literally, here's the ball return, they're at the ball return, and they're rolling it way across the lane, trying to work it down to, I believe it was about the 7-8 board, and fired in. Clara, because she's unique, and she knew what she was good at, she never went to their game because she would lose. If they played her game, they would lose. She went far right and played it down that three board. I think it was 270, 279, 279, 270, second woman ever to make the show. If she did not play to her skill, she would have never, ever made it. She had to understand her ball motion, she had to understand the environment and where it was best for her to play. I'll tell you one analogy you guys always use. If you go to 33 flavor ice cream and you have all these condiments, cherries and chocolate and sprinkles and marshmallows, all the different things you have, between those ice creams and condiments you have at least a million choices. But yet you go in and you pick the ice cream that's right for you, not what everybody has. That'd be boring. It's what you like. Bowling, we've got 40 boards there. We've got oil, we've got friction, we've got different balls, we've got every type of human shape there ever was. Small, big, skinny, whatever. And then you have all the different positions that we all use. There's literally a billion choices probably in bowling between all the variables. What's your skill set? What are you good at? When you start working on that, that's when you beat people. So, with this, I'm going to show you one other thing with this, with our rev trainer. You need to be able to see, and we're going to teach you how to be able to see your ball. Right now, this is my axis point. Everybody's axis point is different. I'm going to put a piece of tape here. And with an axis point, it's like that axle on our car. As, as I'm going down the lane, we have just that piece of tape, and it's the ball's going to be rotating around it. As it gets into oil, you're going to see the ball the tape starts wrapping around in a circle where it was. And then at the very end, you're going to see that ball turn to the right for a right-hander, left for a left-hander, and that tape will actually disappear. Most people don't understand that as my ball is going down, this way down the lane, this pink is towards you, as it comes into friction, 
this white is going to want to get back over towards zero, and that's where the ball transitions. It doesn't stay the same. It starts transitioning, and it stands up. And then, because it wants to find its center of gravity, it will now roll straight forever. It's just like our Earth up in space. You don't know what, what's inside of our Earth, where the weight is. But because it spins freely, it finds that center of gravity where it spins equally. This is the same thing our bowling ball does. So we're going to show you how to look at that. I put a tape, piece of tape on where my axis point is. Now, this transition happens much quicker on the rev train than it does on, on the lane because where you saw that tape staying the same here, so the tape spinning and staying in the same place, that's what happens through the oil. As it starts catching friction, you're going to see that tape now starting to turn a circle. Not in the same place. And then, as we it finishes transitioning, it's going to turn back to the right, and you're going to almost lose sight of that tape. So we're going to show you another one later about exactly how to do this and what it looks like going down the lane and why you need to know this. This can get you a shot or two ahead of every other person. It also can tell you exactly what the environment's doing so that you can make the adjustments you need to make to solve the puzzle and beat the people you're wanting to. Sit home. Have this for yourself. Have this to show your students. Have the students. They must have these themselves or they're not going to get where they want to get. And just practice, practice, practice. is to rev that off the track like I just did. This isn't about getting forward movement. I'm trying to rev the ball, not throw it. That was pretty good. And then you'll see just the result in how many times it spins. Got about another half, half a rev, half a ball turn on that one. It wasn't a very good release at all. So, this is the key to trying to sit there and see the ball motion you're creating. One thing that's going to come out 